What's up? What's up, guys? John here, Titan Lifestyle with Big Drew. What's up, guys? It's Big Drew here with John once again. This is Titan Lifestyle. We're live every Friday right here giving you guys some crazy topics, Absolutely. events, and also yeah. the therapies of the week. Absolutely. The much man. needed therapies of the yes, week. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I always like those therapies of the week, man. And we yeah. always got great subjects that we're covering here on Fridays. And you know what? It's Friday. So everybody should be in a happy mood anyway because the weekend is here. Yeah. Unless you got to work all weekend. Uh, yeah. So, which we do, too. But, but, but then again, if you do have to work all weekend, be grateful that you're working. Yes. we got to be grateful for something. A lot of people out of work right now with the whole pandemic thing. A lot of people are rebounding yes. from the bad year or whatever. So, if you're working, be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Even if it's on a Saturday. What is going on? It's great to meet you, too. Strength Addicts, what's up? NDN Boy. Uh, Jordan's Gym Therapy. What's going on, guys? And a lot, lot more people tuned in. So, we appreciate Every week, you guys tune in, supporting us, you know, on our multiple shows, but especially the Titan Lifestyle with Big Drew. Um, you know, we take this very serious. So, and we want to have fun with you guys, too. So, oh, yeah. let's get into this bad boy. We got to compete with Sharice's show. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. having too much fun over there, so we got to. Sharice locked it down. Yeah, Wednesday, she, she killed it. She Literally, killed it. like, with number-wise, I couldn't believe it. Like, yeah. in the middle of the day, she was complaining. She was like, yeah. Oh, people aren't going to tune in because it's the middle of the day. You know, like, listen. Yeah, it was good. People I watched it. Yeah, it was for good. sure. So it was good. It was definitely good. So uh, let's get into the first subject of the day. Injectable BPC-157 yes. for helping injuries, all kinds of different injuries. So um, a lot of people have got a lot of big benefits out of BPC-157. Injectable, there are some oral forms out there. Um, that can help in some situations, but injectable is usually the way to go across the board. Definitely. Yeah. Put it next to the area, close to the area, mm -hmm. not into the tendon, obviously. Nope. You know, I hear people getting close to their tendons. If you go into a tendon, you're going to think that the, that the, the injection hurts because right. you did it wrong. Right. If you're doing it correctly, you're not going to really feel anything. So a lot of times, whether you're doing HRT or whether you're doing some of the peptides that we have, if the injection is done properly... If it's done properly, it's not gonna, you're not going to have that pain. And it's going to take the pain away from the elbow or the, or the knee or whatever, whatever type of ligament or pain, joint pain you have. Yeah. Stuff is actually going to repair the cartilage rather than just numb it up yep. and you'll grind it and hurt it and have yep. even more problems. You know, so, so muscles, tendons, yeah. ligaments, joints, right? Wow. Healing, so skin wounds or even after surgery, you know, you have that nice little cut in you. This is definitely where BPC-157 can excel and help you guys in healing. Um, and expediting the healing process to make sure you guys get back on your feet a lot quicker so you guys can, you know, go on with your daily life, routine, whatever it is, day-to-day yeah. -day life, training, you know, um, you know, and maybe even adverting going to surgery. You know, this has been a big thing, uh, especially yeah. with for me and my shoulders and stuff like that. I know I've got tons of different people out there yeah. um, that use it. I, I think, you know, Hulk Squad was one of them with his hamstring and he showed in. Yeah. Um, you know, how it was all purple and different things. Dwayne Day's on here a lot yeah. and showed how he recovered from his surgery, his shoulder injury, uh, and that surgery really, really quick. You know, it's just been a lot of different things. There's a lot of different things it can be used for. Um, you want to inject it closest to the area, subcutaneous, mm -hmm. and golf elbow, tennis elbow. So, you know, golf elbow yeah. is back here. Tennis elbow is right here. Um, and a lot of people suffer from this these debilitating um, injuries, you know, yeah. every day. Yeah. yeah, the thing too is if you have any type of pain, you guys, if, you, if you're if you so used to working out with pain, once you get to a certain point, you kind of ease back or kind of stop. Yeah. Um, you, you don't realize once that pain is gone. So a lot of times, say if you're lifting a certain amount of weight for a certain amount of reps, if you've been doing it that way for so long because you have pain, you may be able to get, you know, 50% more weight or, right. you know, five more reps. You've never gone there yeah. because the pain starts happening. So not only is it going to help with, you know, pain, it may help you go past the plateau if you had a plateau in the past where you're just like, you know, once I get to 315 or 405 on the bench, my elbow starts feeling funny. So I always stop at 405, mm -hmm. you know. If you could fix that problem, now you better be up, you know, you might be up 445, 450. Absolutely. But you just didn't know because all these years, as soon as you feel pain, you automatically just stop, which is good if it's a tendon pain rather than, you know, a muscle pump. But, yeah. Another Push big past one, the plateau. Inflammation. Sorry. No, it's all yeah. good. Inflammation. Yeah. I, so a lot of people deal with inflammation, arthritis. You know, these are other things that, are, that can be hurting you all day or affect your workouts or affect daily life activities. Yeah. So that's where really this comes into play too. I mean, if you have inflammation in the body, that can cause a lot of damage to the body in a lot of different ways. Mm. And taking down inflammation is a really, really good way. The way that BPC-157 really works is it creates new blood vessels and it creates blood flow to the 
injured area, helping it repair and heal faster. That's how it works. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's really, really good stuff. We've got a couple questions here. A lot so, of good comments about that. ProFit12, Big John, doing what y'all do at the beach today. So, my man, Brant LaRose, he's in Louisiana. He used to live here in Tampa. He is an IABB pro, too, as well. Nice. Um, he's been with Titan a long time, or at least, you know, on the Titan family. Um, big love and big shout out to him, too. Enjoy your day. I hope you're out there with the family, relaxing. Uh, ND and boy 49 I want to get some BPC 157 well it's real easy to do all you have to do is fill out the new patient paperwork you're going to do a medical consultation via FaceTime or Skype or you can come into our beautiful office and then you can order BPC 157 yeah we'll it's pretty on. simple guys fill out yeah. the new patient paperwork again you don't need blood work for that yep uh, you don't need to get your blood work done so if you guys are you know if you're looking at I want to spend this amount or whatever if it's a budget issue you don't have to that's something you don't have to pay for it so you don't have to pay for your blood work. You just do the new patient paperwork and go through that process. So that's actually saving, you know, when people look at how much something costs versus how much something else costs, they're like, oh, I want to get this because it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah. but you might have to get your blood work to get that. All right. So in the long run, you know, this is actually like it's, it's, it's cheap. Right. You know, it's cheap. And, and, and you know what, guys? It, you know, you pay for what you get, too, a lot of the time. Um, you know, just talking about this right now, um, you know, Brant was on here, so it makes me remind me of it. So he tagged me in this post today where this guy was talking about, you know, if you don't want to call Titan about Hercules Potion, you can call such and such company, right, mm -hmm. about this other uh, research chemical site. And in the thread, right, because I read down the thread, you know, the guy's like, oh, he's like, I want a, a jersey like Big Drew and, uh, mm -hmm. and Rachel Daniels and stuff like that, and I'll rep for him and stuff like that mm -hmm. after that. Uh, and then at that point, he says in the thread, yeah, but, you know, another thing is this Hercules Potion doesn't have the pip that this other stuff has, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it has a lot higher dosage, so it probably works a lot better. It's mm. just really, it was really contradictical. Yeah, so yeah. I wrote in the post, I'm like, hey, man, we can see this, you know, here it is, I'll get yeah. you a new jersey, because we got tons of these jerseys coming in. I ordered a whole bunch, for sure, that's going to be sized right and correctly, because I nice. ordered some from uh, from a couple companies, and it just didn't come in right. So I made sure, I'm like, we're going to be back on this yeah. tip. But you pay for what you get, you know, when... When you're going out there and you're looking for BPC-157, you might see it for 40 bucks, right? Yeah. From a research chemical site, it says for non-human consumption on all their vials, or it has to legally. You know, these things aren't getting tested, right? They're not coming from a U.S. licensed pharmacy. You have no idea what you're putting in your body or where they're made. So at that Yeah, point, basically it means if you die, oh well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. basically. You're not supposed to be doing it anyway. Yeah, you're basically becoming a lab rat. Like, yeah. we'll, we'll see if this works, so we're going to do our research on you. Like, <laughs> let's just try it out and, you know. You're the lab rat. If you have an if you have an infection, not a problem because it's not intended. So yep. that's how they get away with it. That's so right. That's why you don't. If, if they didn't put that disclaimer or whatever you want to call it on there, yep. people would be suing them left and right. They'd be trying to go after them. This this product messed me up. Oh. And once people people once they put that on there, they could basically do whatever they want to. Yeah, I mean, I mean they could send you some hot so, water and say it's whatever and say for research purpose only not intended for human that, that's use. what it is not for human like consumption you know? not for human consumption and i'm gonna consume it like. and, and legally they're not even supposed to suggest <laughs> yeah. or promote for human use but that's just a whole different topic yeah, um all right so and nielsen 5113 said i'm currently on fetamine could i switch to eca or add fetamine to an eca stack all right so definitely switch over from fetamine yeah, to ecas it. I wouldn't add you it. can't yeah, the, the, the medical virus is yeah. a contradictory thing um, as far as, you know, phenamine by itself can hurt the nervous system. It can do cardiovascular damage. Right. That's why you're supposed to get an EKG before you go on it. And after so long, it loses the effectiveness. And that's an FDA appetite suppressant. So you're not getting fat burning properties out of this. It mm -hmm. might make you a little jittery because it's almost like methamphetamine. Um, but at that point, that's going to wear off, and then you're just going to take it to take it to be a crutch and not get any yeah. use out of it. So I would definitely go with ECAs. If you want to add something to that, Prometheus, those two are big one, or AOD. AOD is great. Yeah. That's another big one out there. We've got a lot of people get a lot of results with those therapies, and it will work a lot better than phenamine. We don't even we don't even prescribe phenamine yeah. to patients. And here. if you do have phenamine, like if you have it because you got it somewhere else, and yeah. then you do decide to get some ECA. Also, you know, just don't take it together. Don't take it. Don't take it together. I mean, you know, you're, there's a reason why we're not going to prescribe it or right. give it to you together. So even if you have it on the shelf somewhere yeah. and you get ECA from us, don't take one one day and one the other. And don't try to, you know, do your own math. I'm going to take it in the morning and take one at night. No. 
Just take, just go with the ECA. It'll yeah. be a lot safer. Just do what you're yeah. prescribed to do, yeah. and don't be adding these other things in there because we can only control things that we prescribe. So yeah. if somebody calls up and says, oh, "I'm getting this reaction," or "I'm in the hospital or emergency yeah. room, and this is happening." Well, what did you take? You know, and these, I took oh. something that wasn't intended for <laughs> that's <ECAs>. right. <laughs> and research purposes <laughs> only. So that's what it is. All right. So Romeo Holland said, "I'm in the ER right now with a fractured face. What peptides are good?" Um, fractured face. Fractured face. So it looks like he plays football. Mm. I look at his picture right here. I don't know. Maybe I'm right or wrong. Um, all right. So listen. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think I've ever heard fractured cheekbone, jawbone, fractured face. If you do have a fractured face, okay. Yeah. Now you can be hit in the face, whatever yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, BBC one five seven TB five hundred. Those are going to be your best bet for a fractured face. You know, just anything that's hurt on your body is going to be probably your best. Now, as far as bone healing, it might help a little bit, but it's not. It's not going to like heal your bones like instantly. Yeah. So don't think that. It, some people call it the Wolverine healing. Yeah. Uh, it, I wish it was that quick. Now, in terms of in terms of you know going into more detail about it, if someone does have it, because I've never heard this term yeah. or, or whatever you want to call it, fractured face. Yeah. How are they going to administer the BP seven? If, is if it's in? Are they going to put it sub Q so, so it goes everywhere? Are they actually going to literally put it into this spot near their no, face? No, I wouldn't be putting it in my face. Because uh, that's the first thing I think of when yeah. someone says, "I just." You know, a few minutes back in this video, I said, "Yeah, put it near the area." So now I don't want people out there to hear fractured face. Oh, you know, I broke my jaw. I'm a boxer, and the next thing you know, they're trying to inject their face. I mean, you, you probably could. I just wouldn't. And I wouldn't recommend it on here for anybody. Uh, yeah. What I would do is just do closest to the area. Yeah. So with TB500, it works systemically. So you can pretty much inject that wherever you want, and it's going to work throughout the body really quick. BPC157, not as much. So, you know, if you were to do a fractured face and you mm. want to use BPC157, yeah. I'd probably use it, like, closest to the shoulder area, yeah, like to the trap neck. or something, like, yeah, around here. Yeah, closest yeah. to the area, but not in the face. Yeah. I mean, you know, technically, you know, you could... Or jaw. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little crazy. I probably would. If I had a fractured jaw, I mean, I'm not recommending anybody yeah. else do this. But I probably would go, like, right here. Because there's nothing really right there. It's right near the jaw. Now, I'm talking about actual face. I'm yeah. not going to put anything no. right here. But over here in my neck, if I had, like, a jaw, yeah. you know, a fractured jaw or something like that, I might, I might do You it. could possibly do that. I mean, because it's like a I'd, Botox needle anyway, and Botox, think about it, goes in your face. Yeah, I'd much um, rather have a little prick and, and heal the pain for sure. than be like, oh, I don't want to have a little prick near my face and yeah. then have to... <laughs> have, you know, double the recovery time. It shouldn't cause any scarring or anything yeah. like that doing the injection, so you shouldn't have any issues there as yeah. well. So I hope that helps. I'm sorry that you're in the hospital right now yeah. going through that. Mm -hmm. What's up, William Davis? I will be giving you a call today, like I promised. Frankie Itzeret. Frankie Ritz, how you doing? Um, uh, the other question from Nielsen was, can doctor prescription Anivar or Winstraw? So, all right. I'll be honest with you on both of these things. So oxandrolone, which is the Anavar, can be prescribed, but it's not going to be prescribed by our prescribers, providers, for weight loss or muscle gain. It has to be some sort of um, chronic injury that you've had, surgeries you've had in the past, or a possible surgery that you're just going through. At that point, we can look at something like that, and it is prescribable. Winstraw. So Winstraw is for human consumption. It is prescribed for, it used to be prescribed a lot more, but... Mm. Um, you can't prescribe for patients. We don't prescribe for patients because there's a lot other better uh, medications for what it's used for. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people use Winstraw to cut up, harden up, and stuff like that in the bodybuilding world or in fitness. We don't use Winstraw or Stanazol, what it is. This is the real chemical of it. Um, but it, we, used to, we used to have it before, and it used to be used for vitamin deficiencies and such. So you could get it, but yeah. we don't do it. I don't know a lot of pharmacies that produce it anymore, um, you know, there are a couple out there that I've came across the list, and I was like, I can't yeah. believe I'm seeing this on there, but they are out there. Yeah. Um, but we used to have it on our list a long time ago when we first opened. It's just, yeah. it's not looked upon about the DEA for, yeah. you know, op uh, for obvious mm. reasons. We don't want to get in trouble for something like that, and we don't want people to abuse it. I get a lot of questions like this. Um, I get a lot of DMs. I get a lot of I instant message. I get a lot of. People on the street, people that know about Titan, I get it. People say that all the time. They're asking about anabolics. Do we prescribe anabolics? Um, the only thing that really would be testosterone, which pretty, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a hormone. Yeah. It's not, you know, crazy androgenic. It's not going to give you crazy side effects. It's something that a man and women also already have. That's right. We're just bringing you up in the level that it should be. That's right. Now, in terms of what we have that will work similar to Anavar, um, which is oxandrolone and Winstraw, which is Stanzolol, whether it's injectable or oral. Mm -hmm. What we have, if I were to think of, I've taken those two, 
mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. And so I would think, what what would I take now? I don't take it now, but I, what would I take now that would do the similar effect? Believe it or not, I'd probably go with ECA. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd probably go with MK677 mm-hmm. if my appetite is in, on check. Yep. Because the strength gains that people get from Oxandrolone or Anvil or Anovar, people love it because they can get strong right. and they're not going to, you know, get gain crazy weight or water. Right. So you can get strong on MK six seven seven, but the benefit with MK six seven seven is it's gonna help your ligaments. Absolutely. It's gonna help your tendons. Absolutely. It's not gonna have the crazy side effects. It's also gonna raise IGF one levels. It's gonna raise IGF one levels. So I mean if you were to say if you if you could have your diet on point and take some ECA and MK six seven seven with, you know, just a regular HRT, whatever your doctor oh, prescribes, yeah. that would be much better, much safer um, than taking Anavar and Winstrol. Um, yeah. Anavar is, is known as a safer steroid, so to speak. They prescribe it to kids as well. Yep. But um, to, and to take it anabolically the way you want to take it, it yep. wouldn't be safe. Yeah. When people look at Anavar on paper, they're like, oh yeah, Anavar is safe. They've done tests where they've given subjects 10 milligrams for 90 days. Yeah. 10 milligrams. That's like, you know, 10 milligrams. I know guys taking 40, 50 milligrams with each meal. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's like... It's a drop of the bucket. Yeah, in order to get in order to get big, get strong, have a physical change from taking stuff like that. Yeah. So when you guys are reading all this stuff about, oh yeah, I read it, it's not that bad. Yeah, but how are they taking it? Right. You know, it's kind of like saying a glass of wine, which we heard a few weeks back, yep. isn't good for you anymore in any type of alcohol. Yep. But the whole thing was a glass of wine a day is okay. Right. But then again, if you have a guy drinking a case of beer every night and then drinking shots and then drinking wine and no then next thing you know, you're alcoholic. So everything is, has to do with the doses. Absolutely. So once you come to us, we prescribe it at a dose that's safe for you. That's right. So not only is it like you don't have to worry about, you know, taking more to get bigger or get smaller or whatever, like the dose is safe, your levels are safe, everything is checked out. Like you guys don't understand, for so many years I was literally just Googling, asking people, literally, <laughs> I'm going to try this for 30 days, see what happens. And it was a waste of money. It was a waste of time. And yep. now it's just like, you know, the, the quote on, you know, when you guys are looking up anabolics, just look at the dosing right. on these tests. Right. You're not taking the doses that they're taking on these tests. You're not taking no. three milligrams of oxandrolone every day nope. for 30 days. Nope. These guys are doing 50 milligram tablets, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night, one before. That's 200 milligrams of anabolic a day. That's a lot. I know coaches are telling people to take 200 milligrams of Winstrol a day. Wow. Which is going to blow out your kidneys and you'll have a whole bunch of other problems. You're going to have ED. Your joints are going to hurt. You're going to have high blood pressure. You're going to have a headache. You know, I've had coaches personally, myself, tell me to take 200 milligrams. of. Come on, guys. That's too much. ECA, one a day. MK6, one a day. HRT, in range, and you're good to go. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's another one, you know, out there. And it's like, um, you know, when you talk about Exangelo or Anavar, it's an oral anabolic steroid, right? Mm. Um, and what we see is a lot of people that do it, uh, their their liver functions go really high. So they go in really higher, so double, triple the amount of what it's supposed to be, mm-hmm. which is causing more stress in the body, right? Because your liver is the filter to your body and starting to try to process everything that's going through it. Yeah. So when that's stressed, your body is not working optimally and, and filtering all these things through there. And it can cause damage l- later on down the road, crystallizing the kidneys and such. So you just got to make sure that you, if you guys are going to play with these different things out there, I wouldn't. But make sure you know what you're doing because you guys aren't going by clinical research dosages like you yeah. like said. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, right. I saw one as tested. We test subjects at four milligrams of oxandrolone. Four milligrams. Right. Like these 50 milligram tablets. Yeah. Is like boom, 50 milligrams, 50 <laughs> milligrams. 50, so, let's see what those test subjects do when they're doing 120 milligrams of oxandrolone yes. for 90 days straight yes. with no glutathione or anything no. like that. And then there's a whole nother story. Absolutely. Vio Ryan, what's going on? Strength Addicts. Christian, what's up, dude? BBC is a definitely godsend. And don't be getting it off any of these damn sites. <laughs> they are shady AF, as Christian said. Yeah. Corey Chris, what's going on? Uh, Profit said, uh, used it on my shoulder. Help from pain with lifting. Definitely. Nice. Um, used the rehab. Car I love wreck. hearing about this, the, the, this yeah. stuff, guys. We love this. We Overall love hearing weight about it. show of block stimulus. All right. Becky V. Short, what's going on? Ricky Goodman. A strike gold shave. What's going on? Forever Lux. See it, Lux. Got, got an IFBB pro on there saying that he he. Uh, it's a longer question going down. It says something about his leg. What did it say? He used to use it to rehab his leg from a car wreck. Yeah, he was in a wheelchair. Wow. Yeah. That's the one you. Yeah. That's, yeah, you that's Brant yeah. for sure. Sony hmm. Romeo Gax. What's going on? Uh, Kelly Chad Costin. Switch back. There's so many people on today. Thank you guys for all tuning in. 
All right, hey guys, is it okay to pin glutathione with insulin pin in the quad? Yes. Yeah. So real J, you can pin, you know, obviously you can use insulin pin with glutathione or any of these other vitamin amino acid injectable therapies, and you can pin in your quad. Um, just for me, there's a lot more nerves in the quad, so I don't like injecting in my legs. Drew is probably a little bit different where he likes injecting in his legs. Yeah. And it's all about, you know, what you're comfortable with and yeah. what feels the best, just, right? Yeah, just try it out, I guess. I mean, you go to the doctor, they're usually going to do delt glute to start out. Yeah. But I mean, depending on your ejection frequency, depending on, you know, just how the muscle takes the yeah. takes the substance. Yeah, you know, the Certain people, they can do a shot and they don't even feel anything. It just absorbs right into the muscle. Other people kind of stays around for a little bit, have to yeah. move it around in there. So. Yeah. So just making sure you guys are going yeah. in the muscle too, because otherwise it'll be subcutaneous above, but it'll yeah. absorb. And also move around a little bit after you do an injection. Don't take an injection wherever you inject. Don't just, you know, say if you're doing, I don't know, you're, say if you're doing Hercules potion in your bicep, don't put it in your bicep and then just lay down and go straight to bed. Right. Move it around a little bit. So, especially if it's HRT, oil-based, testosterone, sipinate, yeah. propionate, whatever you guys have prescribed. Once you put it in your delt, after you put it, move it around a little bit. Like move it around, just work it in there. You know, the more moving around and working in, the better. If you just let it sit in there, it might just, you know, that's when you have guys, oh, it feels sore because it's not in there. Yeah. Or do it before you train, too. That way, you know. It gets mental... that blood flowing through there and gets that movement in there. Absolutely. I mean, you have the best workout of your life. You get your Titan box, you get your test sip in the mail, take a shot of test and go to the gym. Ooh. It's like, what? <laughs> it's that like, is the best. Yeah, so that it's like everything. It's in there. I mean, it's like, you know, Ready you're working to go. it in. Yeah. Uh, Greg Hicks, what's up? Sombra, what's up? Raw 777, Hazabrati, PD Crack, what's going on? Money 4617. Muscle mass, uh, MK677. Yeah. So Raw 777, Gonzalez asks, which product can help me raise muscle mass? MK677 for sure. Um, and then I, I know there was a question on Drew's post yesterday where somebody said, does it raise prolactin levels? Nope. Okay, so it's not going to raise prolactin levels at the doses where we're giving our patients. There are people out there that are overdoing dosages that could, you know, cause other issues down the road like this. Yeah. But we're not going to have any usual issues with prolactin or anything like that. Yeah, I'm, when it comes to prolactin estrogen, I'm extremely sensitive. Absolutely. Uh, I'm sensitive. I'm sensitive. Even now, I'm being um, prescribed two different um, ones. Like they have me take one one day, one more the other. Where I'm like, you know, certain people, yeah. certain people may not need certain things. Other people may not may need double. That's why whatever your doctor or your medical provider says to take, take that dose. That's right. The guy could be sitting right next to you that's the same age, same height, same weight, same diet, same everything. If his says take two, it doesn't mean you take two. Yeah. You know, go off of the label that's given you. you know. All right. So Don't Hulk's... take two or three MKs a day and then wonder why your prolactin's going on. This one was a good one. So Hulk Squad, he, um, obviously he's been very in tune to what's going on here and he always chimes in. Um, he's went through BPC-157 for his hamstring injury. So the other thing was sleep. So we were talking about sleep the other day, um, and Hulk Squad asked, you know, what's good for sleep that we have here at Titan Medical Center? So d was one of them. It's a peptide, Delta Sleep-inducing peptide. Um, and then we have Titan Serenity. So he got on to d -SIP. He said, Tuesday I started d at 10 IUs, still woke twice. But last night it took 20 IUs and slept through the night. Nice. This is awesome. Congrats. From someone that was an insomniac for many years, that's huge. Seriously, that's big, guys. Probably you know? feel great. That, that really is. Best mood of your life. Um, you know, the next one, peptides for the lymphatic system. I would actually look for a massage, a masseuse that it specializes in, in lymphatic symptoms, or system, excuse me, lymphatic systems. Um, we're actually going to have somebody starting here in a couple weeks mm. that does these. Nice. So that, like all kinds of different things we're going to be offering here very shortly. So... I would look at that. I don't know what you would use a peptide for, uh, per se, on that. Uh, Andrew Nielsen said MK677, ECA, injectable L-carnitine, good stack for sure. Yeah. So SARMs are safe. So no SARMs are safe, all right? So let's, let's get that straight. And MK677 is not a SARM. Mm -hmm. Originally, when it came out, people misclassified it as a SARM, Select Androgen Receptor Modulator. That's what SARM stands for. Um, it's not, and, and at that point it is a peptide, and it has no liver uh, toxicity. So when you take MK677, you're not going to have problems with the liver. Now, with Ostrain, Carnidine, all these things that are SARMs, we've seen blood testing from people, and one, it usually shuts down their natural production of testosterone. So it suppresses their system. Two, liver functions are usually through the roof. I wouldn't suggest using SARMs to anybody out there, and that's just why. Um, next one, does Titan still offer ACG? Yes, we do. We offer ACG, and it's probably not going to be going away for quite a while. 
uh, you know, back in March of last year was when the whole thing came down. Um, if you didn't have certain qualifications as far as a pharmacy, ACG was going away. That was coming across the board. So a lot of pharmacies had to shut down their ACG product production. And what happened was, was a lot of patients started going for the manufactured version, right? And at that point, then became a shortage, mm -hmm. then became COVID. And at that point, we're still not to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw Jessica on here. She's saying her injection sites have been sore the whole day, maybe doing it wrong. Yeah. Where are you putting... Uh, okay, first, three things. What size needle are you using? Right. What are you putting, and where right. are you putting it? Right. Uh, obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you're um, using alcohol or some type of wipe before and after, using clean needles, all that. So, Jessica, what you need to do is, is you need to come in, and we need to go through... Because you're a tight net now, right? So, at that point, we need to schedule you to come in I'm going to show you how to do the injections properly. Video. And, and we can do a video with it. We can create some content with it for your page and stuff like that. Um, and I want to make sure you're doing them correctly. Because if you're not going to do them correctly or you're doing them incorrectly, it could cause some soreness in the muscle, yeah. um, depending on what it is. I was actually just speaking to someone this morning, um, Yetta. She's a Titan. She's yep. a Titan too, Titan athlete. Going to be competing soon. You know, we're just talking about therapies and uh, Hercules and all this stuff we have. And, you know, we're talking about injections and this and that. And I said, you know, you have to make sure that it's deep enough into the muscle. People are so scared to put the needle in all the I way that they just put it through just the tip. And it's like you're literally giving yourself almost a pimple because it's just underneath the skin. Yeah. It needs to get in there. Yeah. So, guys, make sure you're going straight in. Make sure it's not an angle. And make sure, you know, it's in the muscle. Like yes. In the muscle. Yes. Everyone's body's different. So feel, you know, feel the muscle. If you're doing your tricep and you, if you feel back there, you're like, okay, I feel the muscle right there. Do there. Don't do over here. If you look at my arm, don't do right here. No. There's no muscle right there. You can no. see there's no muscle right there. No. So if someone were to do it, if they're not flexing their arm, they can't tell. Right. If they do it right here, now they're like, oh, my arm's sore. If they were to gone <laughs> right. up here where this is the this is the tricep here. Right. They're good. Right. Down here, pain. Right. So if you do it right, you don't have pain. I don't have pain because I can't tell what side I did. Yeah. Like, if I did my tricep over here, then the next day I'm like, did I do this one, do that? That's where you know you're doing it right, where you're not having, we can't even remember because there's no aftermath of feeling any type of no. soreness. And, it, you know, when you're injecting, let's say it's Hercules Potion, and you inject it in one of these muscles, and you go work out, it might be a little sore for the day or whatever it is, but yeah. that's a good sore. That's not a bad sore, yeah. right? You want to go in, in deep, in there. My man, Jay Jacobs in the house. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? All right, so what else do we got here? Anything other questions on. before I go to our next one? Here's one. The real Jay says some shots on shoulder is smooth and some are limping up and sore for a few days. Please okay. Specify. Okay. Yeah, please let me know what, which injections you're talking about, what medications, okay? Um, I'm assuming he's using a half-inch 30-gauge needle on his delt. Yeah. For some reason, I when I see people do that, they're not hitting like the, just like what I said. Like everyone's yeah. delt's different. Yeah. Your delt has a whole bunch. Like if you see, look at the anatomy chart. It's like a, or when guys are real lean, you see like three different muscles here. Yep. Yeah. So if you're in the middle of that, it's, again, it's not. So move your arm around. Like move it up, move it down. Okay. Yeah. Boom. I can see this is the peak part. Yeah. I'm gonna go straight in right here. That's right. Don't go over here and be like, oh, they told me to move spots. Don't put it. And then you're going over here, because I always have people have these delt issues because they're not. Like everyone, you gotta f has to be in the muscle. Yes. Like it's not just in your body under the skin. Yes. It's not sub Q. Yes. <laughs> you guys are sub Q in your Hercules and your biceps. Wonder why it's not working. It's it's it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll absorb, but it's gonna it might cause some soreness or pain. Bury it. You know. So that's that's really what it is. <laughs> Bury it. Um, you're not gonna hit a shoulder bone. Like that's another question people get. Yeah. If I go all the way in with it, it's gonna hit my shoulder bone. You know it's okay, not. guys. I might have to I might have to do a shot next week to show you guys <laughs> For that real. you're not gonna hurt a shoulder. You're not gonna. Hurt I, shoulder. I know I have bigger shoulders. I could do one and a half inch straight in with my with my uh, testosterone yeah. sipping yeah. I take half a half an ml. That's what they have me do half an ml twice a week. I can go one and a half like the big horse needles that you see straight in. Yeah. And I like that better than if I do you know smaller. So right. everyone, if it's deep in there, if it's deep in there, I mean you're not going to go past the muscle. People are like I don't want to go past the muscle. Then it's not going to be in there. If it's deep in there, you don't have to worry about lumps. You don't have to worry about looking on the outside. That's right. You don't have to worry about coming back up through the hole because that That's can right. happen too. If you guys keep hitting the same spot over and over again, you go in, and the next thing you know, the oil starts coming back out. Mm -hmm. That means there's scar tissue in you. You're not going deep enough, so it's rejecting the oil. So you're 31 gauge, 516 straight. Okay, so 516. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, so that, that, the 31 gauge is a little bit smaller um, than the 30 gauges. Not much, yeah. right? It's still an insulin needle. Um, the 516s, that's fine. 
You know, it's just I, at that Center point, the I would look at where you're injecting right into the delt. Um, and what medications are there, right? All right, and any plans to make L-carnitine by itself? Or So we have L-carnitine by itself. Yeah. A lot of people, they don't know that. But and it's in Hercules. We, and it's in Hercules. And it's in yeah. Nectar of the Gods. Yeah. It's in Titan Complete, I think. So there's a reason why, right? It's because L-carnitine is obviously a, a great amino acid. The next thing is, is we incorporated it into all these different ones, so you guys got a lot more bang for your buck. You know, if you're looking for L carnitine, a Mick blend, right? Go with Titan Complete. You're talking about Mick, B Complex, B12, right? Your three branch chain amino acids and L carnitine. There's no better blend than that out there. Yeah, I remember Mick was like when Mick was when it first Mick, came out. It was Mick. like, oh, it's the biggest thing. Now it's just Dying like, yeah, we'll throw, it, we'll throw it in the Titan Complete. We'll choline chloride is going to be illegal to buy over the counter. That's not good. Not good. Just like uh, NAC is going to be illegal to buy over the counter. Hmm. Don't worry, guys, because it's prescription through us, and that's what they are. They're intended medications. That's hmm. why they're outlawing these different things, because originally they were intended medications. You know, I had this this uh, I had this guy come up to me in the gym, because I've been training over at Crunch for a couple days, right? Hmm. So I'm in there, this guy comes up to me, I have my headphones on, I'm in the middle of the set. Of course, the dude comes up, taps me on the fucking shoulder while I'm working, excuse Titan. my language. He goes, oh, are you the Titan owner? And I'm like, oh, I'm the Titan owner. I'm like, how can I help you? Because I'm, I'm never rude to people, even if it's rude doing what they did. You know, I'm like, hey, listen, uh, how can I help you? He's like, oh, he's like, you know, he's like, uh, NAS going away and all this different stuff. I'm like, well, it's because it was originally a prescribed medication, and that's why they're, they're taking it off over the counter. And I was like, really think about these different things they have over the counter. You're talking about... DHEA, which is a hormone, melatonin, which is a hormone, vitamin D, which is a hormone. Wait, I didn't know about the melatonin. They're taking melatonin off the counter? No, but oh. it's the exact same thing. And oh, kind okay, of look okay. for it down the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because, I mean, at that point, it is one. I mean, they could. They could possibly what? say, hey, listen, this is a hormone. Like, What's going to happen if they ever took the number one drug in the world, caffeine, off the counter? This is a drug. That would be crazy. This is a drug. I just think that too many of the, that would be crazy. the aristocrats take caffeine or drink it in coffee, so yeah. I don't think they'll ever take that away. Yeah, yeah, because it is found. It's not like it's made. You can eat a coffee. You know, I think the reason why they found coffee, I was watching the other night, like, they are out in the wild someplace, and the dogs, like, this is like, I don't know, thousands, hundreds, because I was long ago, but the dogs eat ate the coffee grinds uh -huh. or the coffee plants or whatever, yep, yep. and they started running around, jumping up, going crazy, and they hyper, so then the guy ate it, and then that's how it slowly oh, became. Wow. I just saw this literally like last night. I was watching something, random thing on coffee. That's just a random thought. Yeah, no. You know, it's funny because. But it's crazy how stuff, like if it's grown in the, like you can take it off the shelf. You just go out in the wild and pick a coffee yeah, bean. I mean, you know? listen, even, even in Colombia, right? So most of the workers out there are chewing on coca leaves. Mm. That's what they do. They put them in their mouth. They chew on them. And it stimulates them through the day, but it doesn't give them high. Yeah, yeah, high yeah. Them, right? Because it's yeah. not it's not refined and, and made into that substance. But I wonder what I, I want to try that. I, it's, mind. It's I just, like that all natural, like chewing on a cocoa it's cool. leaf. It's cool. It's cool. You know right? what? I'm gonna find a place in Tampa that has cocoa leaves. I want to try it. I'm not gonna try it in the gym. I'm not gonna try when I have something to do. All right. Um, can you take Titan Complete Hercules Potion? Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Great question, Anush. Uh, we get this question a lot. All these different therapies, you can usually stack them together, right? You can use all of them. And you can even take them in the same syringe at the same time. You can do that um, yeah. with Titan Complete. You can take in the morning Hercules Potion, take before your workouts, 45 minutes. That's the best time to take Hercules Potion yeah. is before your training, 45 minutes to an hour, 30 minutes, even right before you walk in. Yeah. Uh, but Titan Complete, I take in the morning because of all the different properties for fat burning and metabolism boosting and all that that's going in there, plus I'm, the branch chains. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I worked out this morning. I forgot it, and it was it was rough. <laughs> <laughs> it was rough. I'm sitting there like, why do I feel? Why do I feel? Okay, I took the ECA. I did. The thing is, is like mentally I was there, but just I didn't get the amount of reps and yeah. sets and it just uh, the pump. I don't know. Yeah. It was rough. Uh, yeah. Side note, since I've been back on Titan Complete, I've lost all my allergy symptoms, no scratchy throat or itchy feeling. Nice. This is great. And so Keep we were talking up. about this. Keep it up. Don't stop it. No, definitely not. <laughs> Hulk squad, man. So yeah. he was like, you know, I stopped and I started getting all these allergies back. And this is what it is. What up, Stacy? How up, you Stace? doing? All right. Uh, yeah, a lot of times people are like, yeah, I had pain in my elbow. I took this and I stopped it. And then they, you know, yeah. it's, you know a couple weeks later, the, a couple months later, the pain comes back. Or they take something. Like, I haven't gotten sick the whole year. This is great. And then they stop it and they get sick. So yeah. 
a lot of times people only realize when stuff bad is happening, but they don't realize that, right. oh, I'm not getting sick. My nose hasn't been stuck. Right. Keep it up. Keep taking exactly. it. Exactly. You don't have to worry about it. They usually notice when they stop. Yeah, don't stop like, now. I'm like, what what, I, what what have I not doing, been doing? Yeah. Like, oh, that's what it is. I'm like, okay. You know, I've, yeah. I've been there myself, so I know exactly how that yeah. feels. It's like working out and eating right for, you know, 10 weeks to get in shape. Once you're in shape, if you just stop working out and eating right, you're not going to stay there. You no. got to keep it up. So same thing no. with the therapies. Of if course. you're feeling great, performing great, you've been feeling, haven't felt like this in a while. Yep. You, you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you, then keep it up. Stay keep on that going. train, man. Yeah. Keep it going. Uh, Nielsen five one one three said, currently on TRT, switching to Titan. What do you need? All right. So if you're switching over to Titan Medical Center from another prescriber, what we need is we got to make sure that we have a blood test within six months. All the tests that we need, right? After that, you do your medical consultation, fill out the new patient paperwork beforehand. Um, after that, you should be good, man. You should be ready to rock and roll. We'll switch you right over. It should be a really seamless and easy process. All right, so all you have to do is call in, 727-389-3220. You can call or text that line, and the staff will be happy to take care of you, give you all the information you need, and help you transition smoothly and seamlessly, okay? That easy. That easy. So the tinker said she's taking, can you take time to complete an ECA? Or excuse me, time to complete Hercules. I do Hercules with ECA. Great combination right there. Um, you know, if anybody said w what would Titan have for a pre-workout, and I'm not talking about powders or anything like that, yeah. those two in combination, you're going to get stimulants, you're going to get the pump, you're going to get recovery, you're going to get all these great things in there that are going to help you perform better in your exercising activities in the gym or out of the gym. So at that point is what it was. Yeah. We were uh, we were down in Orlando last week, uh, Deke Warner, another sponsored event by Titan Medical Center, the Mid-Florida Classic. So yeah. during the day they had the show, um, and then it was my son's birthday too, and Drew's was a couple of days beforehand. So I said, listen, let's go right between shows, right before the day and the night, let's go to Universal Studios. Yeah, that was fun. We walked that around Universal crazy. Studios, we double-timed it, Drew's like, this is, yeah. this is the best I've ever walked in my life. Uh, listen, <laughs> listen, Sharice, okay, these Kenyan Olympic runners don't have anything on Sharice. <laughs> They don't have any, and the crazy thing is that she doesn't look like she's walking fast, like she's comfortably walking like 20 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know me, and you know me, I'm sweating. <laughs> I didn't have nothing on my head to hold the sweat. I'm drenched everywhere, but it was worth every drop of sweat. I had a great time. We had a great time. I love it. Great, great time. Good, great great good. Time. But, you know, I took some burgers beforehand. Cause I leaned out that day. You though. know, absolutely. You know, you lose a lot of water weight <laughs> and stuff like that, so... Great I'll things, you know, day. especially here in yeah. summer in Florida. It's going to be warm, hot. Luckily, yeah. the sun wasn't playing, but it was humid as hell. Yeah, was, so we were out there just doing our thing, but it's just another good one. Yeah. All right. That was so, a good time, though. It was. A, a lot more to come. So you guys will have the video to show you some of the behind the scenes of that stuff. Yeah. Daddy Shock 510. What's up, gentlemen? How you doing? Is Nandrolone good for joint pain? All right. So Nandrolone or Decadandrolone? It's good right? for masking joint pain. It is. It's good <laughs> for masking. Thank you. <laughs> That's about it. So a lot of people do use this for joint pain, right? And the reason is is because they're having they're having sore shoulders, knees, whatever it is. Um, and what it does is it, it helps by lubricating those areas. And that's why you're not going to feel as much pain. But it masks it. It can cause other issues like prolactin being raised and stuff like that in the body. Um, so that's something that we don't commonly prescribe either unless there's a medical um, necessity for it. Mm -hmm. If there's something in your medical history, chronic injury or surgeries or something like that where it could benefit for a short term period of time we could possibly do something like that but mm -hmm. bpc 157 which we covered earlier mm -hmm. is going to do a hell of a lot more for you in the healing factor process and take away the inflammation from whatever part um, of the joint wherever you're at you know, whether it's your mm -hmm. elbow or your shoulder or your knee now mm -hmm. in those areas it's going to help a hell of a lot better yeah. bpc 157 tb 500 for the healing and to help you out as far as the feeling in that those areas too is right. And to go back on what John was talking about earlier, that's a very good point with the BPCs. It actually helps your skin healing too. Yes. So if you guys have a cut, yes. If you guys, you know, a lady's got a cut or a guy yes. has a cut on his face, you got a photo shoot coming up, you got to go to a wedding or you don't. Me, I, I cut, I scar easily, and I hate having. So do I. Like whenever I bump myself and I cut myself, people are like, does it hurt? I'm like, I don't care. Does it hurt? Is right. it gonna leave a mark? So it's kind of <laughs> like, yeah. It's like I don't care if it hurts. Is it gonna leave a mark? So I mean, I never. I, I've heard that before, but a lot of people don't think about that. Like they don't think about with, it, right? Yeah, scarring, you know. And some if, people have hyperpigmentation of the skin and sensitive skin like that. My son's like that. Yeah, if I, I have a cut, a cat scratch, I'll see it forever. Forever, yeah. right? Even if it's small, I'll see it forever. Um, you know, the big thing with me was is I used BBC 157 in particular just for that. Mm. Um, what was it? I think it was, what, two, it had to have been three years ago. Mm. I think it was at Europa. So they had like a, an obstacle course, right, in Art's all the obstacle courses. I like obstacle courses just to challenge myself a little bit. I'm not as good as him, though. So 
he gets on it, goes through it. I get on it, go through it. I went to go jump, and I don't care. Like, I'm going to finish this thing no matter what. I jump, and I grab this rope and slid down this rope. Oh, yeah. So, it, you know, at that point, man, it left this huge, I'm talking about huge, I'll, I'll pull up the videos from before, this huge, like, cut burn mark mm. on my arm right here. Mm. I was like, damn, this is definitely going to leave a scar. Yeah. Did we so do a video where um, I we, think we were at a lab or something? We did. We were at LabCorp with we Lee and them. Yeah. Mm. I'll see if I can find that. So we were there, and, and you could see it. I mean, it's bad. It looked yeah. like somebody cut me, Drew. Yeah, I hate, so, I, I hate having a scar, but that's that's good. That, uh, it did. helps it, with that, It's too. gone. Like, I got scars I on my shins. It. I get these scars on my shins from deadlifting, from yeah. the bar always scraping and yeah. stuff. I mean, that's it. The thing is, I get a scar from deadlifting, and the next thing you know, it's like, as soon as it heals up, I go to the gym and, <laughs> and hips, I'm just going to start wearing the deadlifting socks. Hit it again. Hit it again. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Hulk Scott, we definitely hit the Hulk ride. We had to hit the Hulk oh, yeah. roller coaster. Yeah. That thing was so... That thing was fun, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. The crazy thing is, you know what I like, too, is I like the Minions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Drew liked the Minions ride. Yeah, yeah. I like the Minions ride. I like ride. the Minions ride. Was, I like the Minions ride. I like the virtual rides. Yeah, man. Yeah. Spider-Man. We hit yeah. all the rides. So yeah. we hit both parks. We just hurried up and ran. Yeah. Well, basically ran. I mean, we were walking as fast as we possibly could. Um, hey, the Olympic you know. trials happened this weekend yes. to track and field. Yes. Sharice, sign yes. up. <laughs> going unattached as a tight medical athlete because you were running like flying. Yes, yeah. we were definitely moving. We were definitely Great moving. term. Daddy fun. Shock, you're welcome. Um, so if you can look at this, Drew, uh, you can see those, see those cuts on my arm? Oh, yeah. Dude, they were pretty deep. Those man. were like, yeah, you can see that's like rope. Like, yeah, in it there. was really, it was like rope burn. Like, and you can't see anything, no. Gone. Not even, not, not even, even, you can't even see where it was or anything. No. Yeah. Luckily. That's crazy. Because when you said you had this big gash on your arm, I'm like, it couldn't be that bad. But yeah, I guess they it were. There was like two or three of them, and they were nasty looking. I couldn't believe it. Um, and I was like, man, I was like, these are gonna leave some bad scars. You just put, man. so you just put it literally just around the yeah, area. Yeah. So I, I put it like right above it, on yeah. both of them, like right in the middle. Now, obviously, have these veins in here and stuff like that. So, but yeah. and I just pinched a little skin and put it in because you know you had to pinch skin right here. Yeah, it's yeah. So tight, and went right to those things, gone. It didn't take too long either. It was like two months, three months, and gone. It's, it's kind of so bony in my shin, but I could try to get it in there, heal that up. A might little be bit. able to. Definitely might be able to. Yeah. Uh, best back, best therapy for lower back pain. Gonna have to be BPC one five seven or TD five hundred, man. BPC one five seven is a favorite for me um, because when these things got released from U.S. licensed pharmacies, BPC one five seven was the first peptide to be released like that. So I had some serious shoulder injuries, golf elbow, and. I had tennis elbow and a shoulder injury. Healed up, real awesome. I documented it, and like it was like brand new to a certain degree, so I heard it later on. Mm. But uh, definitely worked really, really well. Illmatic, Team Tight, what's up, brother? Uh, Gorilla Zo, 60, yo, what's going on? How you doing? Also, if you guys are having lower back pain, real quick, a lot of times people think it's back pain, but your kidneys are back Ooh. there. So if you guys are partying a lot or taking a lot of anabolics or putting yeah. your kidneys through a lot of stress, yeah. if they're starting to crystallize within your kidneys, that's on your lower back. So times people would be like, oh, I'm having lower back pain. I'm having lower back pain. Okay, clean up your diet, drink a gallon of water a day and cut this out. Yep. If the back pain goes away, yep. then it might be kidneys too. So don't automatically assume it's, you know, you might want to get that checked out too. Yep. Make sure your kidneys, everything's functioning properly. Blood work is key to make yeah. sure all these internal organs and vital organs are working properly. So you definitely want to do that at least twice a year. No matter if you're doing HRT or not doing HRT, you're looking over and going on what's inside. Yeah, if you have a sore, sore lower back, kidneys are right back there absolutely so it could be, if you think it's minute yeah. all right so let's get into some more subjects for today yeah. florida doctor mistakenly yeah. does surgery on the wrong test score. yes basically the guy, guy was getting it wasn't like a crazy surgery i guess he was just getting like some veins or something removed it wasn't so like you know, varicose veins on the testicles i read all these articles yeah. before so varicose veins are, are, are hurtful anyway right but varicose veins on the testicles are large veins mm. and what they can cause infertility they can cause uh like like basically shutting down the testosterone yeah. production in your testicles. Call Titan. Yep, call Titan at that point, right? We we do have some people that have cancer in testicles and had had them removed mm. and have one testicle, like Lance Armstrong. Mm. We didn't have Lance Armstrong as a, as a patient, but like that Lance Armstrong did, yeah. and we, we, we do help them out with HRT because mm. they don't produce testosterone like that. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Dr. Raul Fernandez Crespo, yeah. he's only been practicing medicine for two years, and you know, I was really crazy to see the, the. It was very minimal what happened to this guy. Two thousand dollar fine. Yeah. For literally, he might. I mean, the guy, this guy who had the testicle operated on, 
He might not ever be able to have kids. Right. He might, all this stuff, $2,000. Well, what happened was it's really crazy. When, That's I read, like, when I read this article, right, he's in this procedure. He marks the wrong testicle. St- he does the, the, the procedure on the wrong testicle. And the middle of the procedure goes, he, yeah. I messed up. He marked it before. Right? All right. right, right so yeah. let me do the other testicle. He did the other testicle, too, yeah. mm-hmm. and tried to cover it up. And at that point, this guy had a concern afterwards. They found out this guy was lying about it or did the wrong procedure. Um, and the, the Florida Medical Board, I mean, they didn't suspend his license. They didn't take away his license. All they did was they charged him the, the $2,500 fine. Um, they wrote a, a letter of concern. And they charged him another $2,000 for reimbursement because the Department of Health had to um, look into this case. So less than five grand from messing up a guy's one testicle and then the other because he had to make it look like this and that. This is medical malpractice written all over it, guys. I don't know how this guy did not lose a a ton of money. I want to know in the next few weeks or days or months what else is going to happen because this is like the first thing. There's going to be, you know. This happened in 2019? Oh, wait, no. It happened just recently. That's correct. So I'm like, you know, at first they're like, oh, you're getting a four, two thousand fine. He might get sued. He might get all kinds of other stuff going on. But yeah, four grand, forty five hundred dollars. That is that's, crazy. That's the I thought immediately they're going to take his license. I mean, or at, at least suspend it. Yeah, I thought that's the first. Okay, you know, keep away take from a license away for a year. I, I would, if it were me, I'm not a, you know, I don't make any decisions like that. I don't even know how it works. But I'd automatically assume, okay, no license for a year and maybe like a ten thousand dollar fine. Yeah. Like I would think that that would be something. But forty five hundred dollars, yep. and you can go back to work on Monday. A little behind crazy. the scenes of things, so you guys know, um, because I know all of this stuff yeah. as an owner of a medical practice. Um, it's really hard to convict a doctor. It's mm. very hard to take a doctor's license away. Yeah. So uh, you know, this doesn't surprise me, but it was surprising, and at that, basically, you know, this guy got away with something very very common that he should not have got away with that should have definitely been a medical malpractice thing mm-hmm. so it is what it is let me go live here back on instagram for these people yep we'll all right on instagram. We're fine. we'll record it put it up after. all right so basically at this point the next one we finally have real working flying hoverboards okay. dude i see this back article to the i'm like Jetsons. hell yeah there, there's people flying around these things right now just in new york they, they call this guy Green Goblin. This guy, somebody was riding around on one of these platforms. In New York, How in high does it go? Very oh, high. No, I mean, you could be stories high? Very high. Oh, what? So <laughs> this looks- guy has been racing this thing, right? And basically at this point, looks like the Green Goblin, right? It has this like hoverboard this is, type thing. It's like, we're going to have to start having air traffic control. It's ridiculous. Yeah, there's um, air zones soon. Yeah. So there's going to have to be air zones. Now, with this... This guy's producing these things, and, and he said in two years he'll be able to produce them commercially. But it's not going to be for the general public. So for the general public, what up? How you guys doing out there? What's up, Rachel? Yeah, Rachel, what's going on? So our, our original fee went down, so we just went re back up for this one. But basically, you know, he's not going to sell them commercially in the first two. At that point, what's going to happen is he's going to sell them to airline pilots first or mm-hmm. uh, aviation engineers, I guess. And then after that, they're going to make a commercial one for everybody to be able to have. So Back to the Future is coming really, really quick with hoverboards. Yeah, but if he's doing it, there's another guy that just saw this video. It's like, oh, I'm going to make one too. Yeah. So, I mean. The one that they're talking about, the Omni hoverboard. That yeah. is crazy. And they're pretty, I'm, I'm sure they're going to have one that has a seat. <laughs> so it's going to look like a guy sitting on a recliner and a drone flying around the city. Trust me, guys. As soon as one of these things comes yeah, out I know and you I can buy it, yeah, yeah, I'm you. buying one. I know you. I'm buying one for you. Titan. We're taking rides on this thing. It's going to be awesome. Above the water, that'd be nice. Yeah, above see, the water. now, above the water is something that they already have, right? They have, like, the jet boards that go above the yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. And they're usually hooked to like a jet ski or something like that that's powering the water through there, and that's what's giving them flight. Yeah. Uh, with this, this is really, really cool. But to um, actually be able to cruise above the water cruise, and just see yeah. the, without a wake, yes. just like this. Usually, yes. you're so used to seeing a wake and just cruising on the water, like yeah. the sunset, the air. So, Maybe best believe the, it. got the headphone with the music on. It's going to be, man. It's, they do a lot of testing over the water just yeah. because if they fall, they're going right. to fall in the water. Right. Yeah. Right. But that's, what, that's the reason why I would like it because yeah. I don't trust anything. So. Plus, you're not going to injure anybody. <laughs> Think least. about if you go down in a street. Yeah, yeah. Man, you're gonna you're gonna crash into people. You're gonna hurt people, possibly kill people. So it's yeah. Be some crazy. of these drones you see flying around, it's like who's controlling this thing? Oh yeah, list. What's going on? Abella Garcia, Carlos, uh, Ricardo. What's going on? Shacy Fit. What up, guys? How you doing? We're doing great. Um, so listen, if you guys missed out on the earlier part of this conversation, don't worry. We're gonna post it up on the page. 
all nice and beautiful for you guys. So you guys can see the full show, how it's supposed to be. All right. Also, you guys can check out the podcast too. If you guys want to listen to us, if yep. you're if you're driving, if you're working. You know, some people are at home working. If you want to listen to us, you're at home working. Check out the podcast. You can listen to this show. You can listen to all the past shows. You know, you can kind of go back and watch them over and over. You can listen to us all day long. Absolutely. All day. A long drive, whatever it is. That's the way to do it. All right. Uh, Don't don't uh, don't watch the show while you're driving. So cool. That's true. All right. So the next one: newborns face sliced during emergency C-section. Thirteen stitches. I feel so bad for this. I feel so bad for the baby. I feel so. I mean, the the baby. I feel so bad for the parents. I mean, pretty much the girl's gonna grow up her whole life with a scar on her face. Yeah. I mean, there's no way you could take that scar away with them surgeries. BBC one five seven. Yeah. Exactly. Might help a little bit. Yeah. BBC something like that might help. This but is, the thing is, is I'm surprised we haven't heard, I haven't heard about this earlier. Yeah. Or like, not earlier, or like years ago or whatever. I mean, you're cutting into a woman's stomach, yeah. the baby's right there. Yeah. But on the baby's face is like a permanent, oh man, I feel so bad for the baby. And I'm glad that wasn't, you know, my baby or something right. like that. I mean. Right. <laughs> it's I mean, it's like, horrible. Who it's knows horrible. what's going to, I mean, the doctor or whoever it was, uh, man. Yeah, I mean, gotta, is, <laughs> it's pretty serious, guys. I mean, at that point, this is a baby and. It has no chance yet of, of life, and you know, regularly. And at that point, it's already Whole starting out with a big, have a big scar on its face. You know, yeah. so uh, you had know. Had to do it though. You know, to get hopefully, it out. Ho- hopefully, you Accidents know. Accidents happen. Yeah. Accidents happen. Things can happen. Absolutely, that's for sure. That's why you sign off on the liability forms before yeah. you go into surgery or any yeah. one of these things, because it does really cover the doctor's asses. Hopefully, oh, we never know. It might be a situation where. You know, it's a it's a girl baby, right? Yeah, it might be a situation where she turns into a supermodel and has a, a trademark scar on her face, like Seal. You know, true. Seal has those oh, yeah. trademark scars yeah. or something like that. I mean, you gotta take look at it from some type yeah. of way, but some uh, sort of positive way. For one sure. one thing though that is not a good thing, but it's gonna be easier for the the babe the baby to deal with, is that she's always had it. It wasn't like she was you know, sixteen years old and putting makeup on every day to go to school, and all of a sudden her face and she's not used to it. So if, if you try to take anything, like, you know, not I wouldn't want to use that term good about it, but, you know, she's never going to know what it's like not to have a scar on her right, face. You know? Right, right. It does build a little bit of character. So, you know, it's, sure. it's like someone, if they lose their arm when they're 25, yeah, it's different than if they've never had an arm because they've never known what it's like to have Absolutely. two arms. So, Pretty know, serious. Yeah. Got about a five-minute warning. Jim. All right, guys, we got five minutes left. Thank you guys for all tuning in. If you guys are just tuning in, the second part, the first part, everything will be together. We're going to put it on the page afterwards so you guys can see the whole show like it was intended to be. All right, so the next one, champion transgen- transgender hurdler, Tefler ruled out for U.S. Olympic trials. Now, this is the second time I've covered transgenders in the Olympics in this week. The yeah. first time was on Titan Talk this Tuesday. We were talking about mm. uh, the first Olympic power lifter, yeah. transgender. And this girl, or he, whoever mm. it is, he, she, um, was a guy, right? Mm. Until the 20s was a world-breaking break- power lifter, male. Mm. Us Tried, New Zealand, right? Yep. Tried yeah, to tra- yeah. Did do the transition, and now he's going to the Olympics. Um now, the only thing they do for this testing like this is they basically test these transgenders for a whole pumped. year. And at that point, they have to have testosterone levels within a certain range. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. Same thing happened with this person, this mm-hmm. transgendered. Um, but at this point, this guy originally was a guy. This guy was in a Division II. Um, Franklin tri- Pierce is a tiny school in New Hampshire. Yeah, I've actually you know played, what it is, right? No, I've actually, I've actually when, I was in, when I was in school, we used to play a lot of tournaments like all of New England. I've actually been there when I was like, I think I was like 14 or 15 for a basketball AAU game. Yeah. It's a tiny little school. It looks like a high school. Right. And so, I mean, it's not like, you know, he or was at a huge major division. He didn't even, he wasn't even good enough to run it like, you know, University of nope. USF nope. or even in one double A. Nope. He's running at a tiny division two school yep. in, I think it's in Nashua or I'm not sure where it is, somewhere up in New Hampshire. Come on. Now. Yeah, this is crazy. So, at that what point, am I going to? Am I going to sign up? Yeah. Like, what are they going to say saying. if someone shows up that actually looks like a man, though? Like he, she, uh, she was a woman now who wants to be referred to a woman. So I'll, she has her hair done and dresses like a woman. What is going to happen? There's no law that says you have to look right. So what's going to happen if someone like me, with a full beard, with a deep voice, that's you know not even like I'm, and I just say I'm a woman, uh, dude? I- I'm telling you, listen. The only thing that these people have to do is, is this. If you really want to blast go the in there for a year, guy, you're, now you're that's a guy. It. You blast tests, right? <laughs> and then at that point, you stop taking testosterone, your levels crash. 
It's real simple and easy to do. All right, that's that's a that's a little shortcut, I guess, if you really want to get into the Olympics as a female and you're a male. You can just say, hey, listen, I'm going to be a female because this dude at the school originally was in sophomore and junior, right, and then couldn't win. Yeah. And at that point, changes over to a female in his senior year and then becomes a top female, Yeah, right, in the country. And as that's the that same, th- same thing happened with, with in high school with the, with the two transgenders from Connecticut when they went to New England championships. It was like winter track, he was on the boys' team, and then the same season, spring track, now you're on the girls' team and set the state record and all this stuff and now has all these other, you know. This is a damn shame. It's bad. I'm telling you like, guys. How do people not shame. see that this is unfair? Like, it's not even just that, it's not even just about, you know, if people want to act a certain way, if they want to be referred to a certain way, that's fine. I mean, if you want to be gay, Dude, be gay. You want to be a transgender? Be, great. Fine. But that does not mean that I could compete with a female power lifter. That's what I'm saying. I, like, listen, if you want to change or transition, please, we are all about that, right? Yeah. You know, even at Titan Medical Center, we've helped some people transition. Yeah. But to compete, and you're a male competing yeah. against a female, it's just not right. It's yeah. just not fair. I, when it's you got gonna, Caitlyn Jenner, yeah. right, who's transitioned and used to be an Olympic athlete, gold medalist, yeah, yeah. right, and he said it's not fair. It's not fair. It's yeah, and the thing fair. is, is he could probably go out there right now and beat all of them at the age he, she or he is right now because right. he was a top athlete, like gold medalist. <laughs> okay, I don't know. It man. just it's just really crazy. So hopefully we get some clarification on this. Uh, and hopefully they really start locking some of these things down, which I don't see coming. I just see, see things opening back up even more. Um, and just why I don't not know. just make it, it have a transgender Olympics? That, that's that's what we and should do. Do it on all levels. Third division. Do it on all levels. Even though I don't agree with kids that aren't eighteen making that decision, right. I don't agree with that at all. I don't care. Right. I don't care what the situation. I don't care. Here's the thing. I don't care from the time. I don't care if when your son was a baby, he said his first words were, "I'm a girl." I don't care. I don't care. But just make it like, you know, a high school, like, you know, a state championship. This is the transgender yep. college. So that way it's like an even playing field. Because, you know, one thing about the Olympics, they have sort of some sort of regulation in place, right, mm. for the testing and stuff. In high school, there's no regulation. None. None. And that's why that in the None. same season you can go, what if, what I mean. They don't the test their, their hormones. They don't do shit. All they do is, all right, they transition, there. that's what they are. And all you have to do is, just, when you look at track, track's one of my favorite sports because it's all about distance and time. So if you take a guy from the 1950s, his distance and time was good today. That's why you'll see high schoolers, if they're fast enough, they can run these Olympic trials that they're having. Right. Okay, just to give you guys perspective, 100 meters, 100 meter dash for men. The world record, Usain Bolt, 9.5. That's ridiculous. But the guys yesterday or the day before on the 100 meters, their times were like uh, Trayvon Brumel has a 9.77 fast in the world this year. He ran a 9.8. Some of the guys were running 9.9. The slower guys in the heat were running like 10.1. Wow. 10.0. Okay. Fast. If that guy, the guy that got last place that run 10.1, he could literally become a woman. And the world record flow, Joe, that hasn't been touched since 88 is 10.49. Wow. So even if even the guy that's in very last place on the track decide to be a woman, he would beat the world record by three tenths of a second, which has never been done before. And he's last place. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's, that's flow, Joe, which is like untouchable. She's like an alien. Like, yeah. so. you gotta go, guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Too much fun over here. Too much fun. Great questions. Great engagement. Thank you guys again. Yeah. We really appreciate it. We're here for you guys every Friday, 2 p.m. on Fridays. Yeah. Me and Big Drew for Titan Lifestyle. Um, guys, tune into our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, right, YouTube. Subscribe. Hit the all notification bell. Make sure you guys are listening to us every time we're coming on because we're bringing guys information and want to chop it up and interact with you guys. Anything else, Drew? That's pretty much it. Make sure you guys check us out every week. If you guys are on YouTube, hit the bell so you can be notified of videos like this. And again, like I said before, if you guys want to check out the podcast, listen to the podcast. You can listen to that whenever. Just yeah. Google Titan Lifestyle Podcast. If you have an iPhone, it'll pop up. If you have an Android, just Google it. It'll pop up. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next Friday at 2 p.m. Have Me a and great Drew. week. Later, guys.